All right, guys. Um, I know I don't get a chance to really speak to everyone all the time like I used to. Business has been uh, super busy. Um, I'm quite sure a lot of people can tell. Um, I'm not posting it as much, but I do have to kind of address some things that I've been seeing and noticing. Um, big ups to the big, you know, to the people that are coming out. Uh, ones who are self-educators and trying to educate the community. Big ups to those people, but you know, I want to put out some information that when you're speaking from a vegan's perspective, from a raw foodist perspective, you want to make sure that you don't have rage or high excitability in your heart. See, what's happening is, is that a vegan speaks from passion. He speaks from he speaks careful, calm, because that's what the photosynthesis of the sun has to do. It is a calm growth that goes on in our body, a spiritual awakening. So my heart chakra may have a thousand petals that I can give out to the world passionately, but those who are speaking belligerently with that high excitability, that's rage in your heart. So you need some balancing. You need to really go back and start balancing your endocrine system. So I come to uh, really just talk about some things that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, there's uh, three classifications of vessels in our body. I'm always talking about the blood, the blood this, the blood that, but I never really talk about this other, this third classification of vessels. So I talk about the arteries, I talk about the veins, but I never really talk about the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is um, what controls all of our white blood cells. Our white blood cells are carried like uh, lymphocytes, your leukocytes, or your CD4, CD8s, um, all of your, your T-cells. And what's going on with this is that they don't have a pump where there's consistent flow of, if, if you don't move, then your lymphatic system does not move. So there's a slow process of movement going on in our bodies. And there's about 600 to 700 lymph nodes inside of us. And they travel through lymphatic vessels. But they travel in one direction, so that means they have valves, just like the veins have valves. And those have um, what you call capillaries, where the blood has to empty out its impurities into the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system takes some fluid, empties it back, and then empties it out in the filtration system. Our filtration system is what we call our three kidneys. And you notice if I said three kidneys, I'm meaning that we got two, our left is going to handle all of our left lymphatics, which is our vessels, our lymph nodes. Kidney is going to handle that. And then we got our right that's going to handle all of our right lymphatics and vessels. But I said three because whatever the cells the, for, for one thing you gotta know that the cells do produce waste and they have to excrete waste because a billion cells have to leave our body and we have to create new cells every every day so those old cells have to be excreted so I mean our skin our skin is another mechanism to excrete waste if you ever notice that we have, uh, sometimes you may break out or just have a small pimple may pop up. You don't know why, it's, a, it's called a cherry hemiojoma. Um, they either pus filled, and that pus is that second fluid. You only got two fluids in our bodies, two fluids. That's our blood and our interstitial fluid. Interstitial fluid is that pus that comes out. Interstitial fluid is that 
deep phlegm that you cough up. It's nothing but white blood cells. So interstitial fluid is what's surrounding most of our bodies. It's all of our mucosal membranes everywhere. It's actually more than your blood. Three-fourths of your body is interstitial fluid. So, everything up under your gums, interstitial fluid. Every time you, I mean, I thought about the women that has fibroid tumors. Nothing but interstitial fluid. But it's hardening. Anything that has a, a cyst, it's interstitial fluid. So you got to come in common with that name right there. Um, it's white blood cells. When they are not able to fight off an infection, a bacteria, then they build up white blood cells. You get swollen lymph nodes because of that. Because of certain infections that invade our body that they can't seem to fight off. So what these viruses also do, those who are having like um, herpes, um, simplex, um, HIV, um, what happens is that this virus has invaded and the T cells, which are supposed to act as precursors to the CD4 cells, which is CD8s and CD4s. They're both T cells. These T cells come from the thymus gland, and it's a lot of research going on with this thymus gland. But just, I'm gonna give you some brief things about the thymus gland. But anyway, in the HIV patient, these uh, T cells they can't fight off the um, virus, so the antigens that are there they build antibodies against it, and they simply just take over and replicate, proliferate those cells. In order, now it's a protein. HIV is a protein. It's a long strand, sophisticated protein, complex. But since it is a protein, that means that it can be excreted. Yes, that means that it can be filtrated. That means that it can go through the urinary system as albumin. It's a lot of people that don't understand about chemistry. But those T cells have to be able to regrow some kind of way. Now they say that the thymus gland produces thymosin, which is the hormone that it produces by the time you're out of puberty, it doesn't produce it anymore. So after 12, 13 years old, your thymus gland is pretty much shrinking after that but if you can produce more thymosin that means you can produce more T cells to fight off that virus now, I don't know if any sciences or anything like I don't I don't watch everybody I just study secretly on my own but if they actually look at the T cell count the CD4 counts so that's when it's up on the 200 cell count then you're considered to be HIV positive. But if I can get that count all the way up, back up to 600 in your normal, then you can't see HIV anymore. You can't see it. But colostrum is what I found out the research. Everybody, if you don't know what colostrum is, it's what um, the mammary glands secrete for the baby. Um, the baby has to have colostrum within the first few days or if it doesn't then it's gonna die just like the calf of a cow you have to have colostrum so the colostrum actually builds up the uh, thymus gland and as a baby as an infant the thymus gland is about the size of an orange It's half the size of its lung and as we get older it starts to shrink so you can say by the time we're about 60 years old, it's going to be the size of a pea. Very, very small. So, um, the lymphatic system has to work. It has, it has to work. All that's dealing with the lymphatic system because 
those sales are made from that and they have to travel through that um, that pathway and that's how you excrete those type of proteins so everybody always talk about um, how the disease cause and how to get rid of so I, I always work on the solution I tell people stop worrying about the disease you worry about your health as the solution and you you you, you you eat to live. Stop living to eat. So, um, I just want to leave you guys with that. You know, it's about wholeness. It's about shalom. So, I give thanks. <laughs>